So this video is to show you how to uh, use the calculator to uh, construct confidence intervals for estimating proportions. Um, so again, proportion of successes out of, uh, out of an entire population, uh, estimating population proportions, I guess I should say, based on uh, a sample, uh, a number of successes out of a, a, a fixed number of, of trials um, that we're considering our, our sample size. Um, so we were looking at a, a survey of, of registered voters uh, and we said 650 out of uh, 1,105 registered voters said that they voted in the last presidential election. This was a, a second example that we were looking at, comparing it to a, um, a, an earlier example. Um, so uh, with that, we wanted to calculate a 90% confidence interval for the proportion of voters who had actually voted. Uh, so in order to do that, we go to Stat, and then over to Tests, and then 1PropZ int is the one that we want. Notice that we pass up one prop Z test on the way. We're going to use uh, the hypothesis testing later on and that's where that will be. But for now one prop Z int is A on my calculator. Alright, so we'll hit enter there and it asks for several things. It asks for X, that's our number of successes in our sample, N, the total sample size, the number of trials, and then our confidence level. And it's written as a decimal there. You can actually get away with uh, putting it in as, as that percentage whole number as well. Alright, so 650 successes, the number of voters in our sample who said that they voted, um, registered voters who said that they voted in the last presidential election, uh, and 1,105 uh, was the total uh, sample size, the, the size of our survey there. Uh, and the confidence level that we wanted was 90%, so I'm going to put in 0.9 or 0.90. Again, if you put 90 there, it'll understand what you mean and, and go with that. And then you just go down and hit enter on calculate. And that gives us this confidence interval. It reminds you um, what your n was. And it also gives you the value of p hat, which is x over n, the sample proportion of successes. Remember that p hat is right in the middle of that confidence interval. And then there's a margin of error that's been calculated by, uh, by the calculator here that gives us those uh, lower and upper bounds um, for that confidence interval. All right. And again, our way int of interpreting that was we are 90% confident that this interval between 5, uh, 0.563 uh, 88 8 and 0.61259 contains the true value of the actual uh, population proportion of all voters uh, who voted. So we're, we're pretty confident that it's between 56% um, uh, and 61% roughly. Okay, uh, so to try another example, um, not to make you think that, that all of these have to do with, with politics and voting, uh, but that is a common place where these show up. Uh, and this, this example is kind of inspired by uh, watching election results come in during the 2012 election, um, in particular for the, the vote for mayor in Houston. Um, so at, across the, the bottom of, uh, of the show that I was watching, um, they, they had the voting results coming in, and it said it was 68% of the precincts reporting, and it gave me the total number of votes there, 92,851. Uh, mayor Anise Parker, who was the, the mayor at the time and, and still is at, as, the time that, at a, as of the time that I'm recording this at least, uh, received 51% of the votes uh, out of those 92,851. So what we want to do is construct a 99%. We want to be really sure on this one. Uh, the higher the confidence level, the, the stronger um, conclusion we have, but the price that we pay for that is that we get a wider uh, confidence interval, a larger margin of error. Um, uh, construct a 99% confidence interval for the proportion of voters uh, who voted for uh, Anise Parker for this percentage of, of voters. So 51% of our sample uh, actually voted for Anise Parker. Uh, what we want to know is what's a confidence interval for um, uh, for the uh, the actual proportion of voters who who uh, who will vote for for Anise Parker out of the entire uh, population of voters. Um, so then we'll we'll see if we can conclude from that. Uh, with this 99% confidence that she would win the election. All right, so again, we'll go to stat, over to tests, one prop z int. We're calculating a, a confidence interval for a proportion. So int for interval, prop for proportion, one because it's just one proportion that we're using there. We're not comparing two different proportions. All right, and then we put in 47,354. How did I calculate that? Well, that came from 51% of uh, the total number of votes that were in. We said 51% voted for Anise Parker. There were 92,851 votes. Um, so 51% of those, 0.51 times 92,851 uh, is this 47,354. Actually, there's a tiny little decimal on that, but it's obviously have to, has to be a whole number for counting people there. Um, so that, that whole number of voters should be that 47,000 number. And then our N, 92,851. And then our confidence level, we wanted a 99% confidence uh, level. You can put 0.99. I'm just going to show you that it'll understand if you put in 99 there. And then hit enter on calculate. 
and the calculator um, constructs that confidence interval for us. Uh, you'd see the P hat here is 0 0.5099. That's that 51% uh, of voters who had voted for, uh, for Mayor Parker at, at the time, um, with 68% of, of precincts reporting. Uh, notice that 68% didn't really come into play. That was just uh, kind of some extra information there that, um, that uh, we could actually use to, to figure out how many, well, to see how many voters there would, there would actually be in the, in the entire population or get an estimate of that. But um, they often report that just to say how close it is to all of the votes being in. Um, but uh, 92,851 uh, votes was, was the number that we used there for our sample size. Uh, and that it reminds us of that as well. Along with this confidence interval, which I have written down here as well, 0.50577 to 0.51423. So we're pretty confident that it's between, uh, let's see, 50.5, 50.6% and 51.4%, that the actual proportion of voters um, who voted for, for Mayor Parker um, would be um, between 50.5 to 51.5%. Um, notice we get a pretty narrow confidence interval there, a, a small margin of error. Um, the difference between 51% and these two values is, is re very small. Uh, and part of that is because we have such a large sample size there. Uh, the larger the sample size is, the smaller that margin of error is going to be. And if you look at that margin of error formula, um, you can see the, the reason for that. That N shows up in the denominator uh, of that margin of error formula. So a larger sample size will get us a, a narrower confidence interval and, and uh, kind of zero us in on what that true value or where we think that true value should be. Um, so uh, with that said, we, we've got 99% uh, confidence that the, the true proportion of all the voters who will vote for Mayor Parker uh, is between there. Um, and uh, since 50%, uh, we need more than 50% to win, and 50% is outside of this interval. It's to the left of this interval. Um, so we're, we're confident that more than 50% of the voters uh, will vote for Mayor Parker. And we could, we could say that we would call the election for uh, Mayor Parker at that time. Now, there's probably a little bit more that goes into calling those elections than, um, than just that. Um, because uh, maybe some of those precincts would be precincts that traditionally wouldn't vote for uh, for uh, for a certain party or something like that. Um, so there's there's some politics that go into that as well. But as far as the statistics go, it seems like we'll definitely have more than 50 percent of the voters um, voting for Anise Parker, even though um, we only see uh, 51 uh, percent uh, coming in for her so far. Um, there's a lot of votes still out there, but. Um, uh, uh, at, at this point, we could probably safely call that election, as long as we're confident, again, that there's not any politics that would say that the other 32% other of those precincts would, uh, uh, would not vote for, for Mayor Parker compared to, compared to the 68% that had reported. Um, and uh, Mayor Parker is, is still the mayor, so uh, she did win that election um, with, uh, uh, with a majority of, of the votes, and we're, we, we can kind of predict that. Um, uh, from uh, some of those votes, and that's that's uh, that's part of how they they do those predictions on on CNN and on the news on on election night. Um, though sometimes they end up being wrong, whether that's because of uh, political reasons or whether that's because of uh, just this. Uh, again, sometimes we end up being wrong in statistics. With that 99% confidence, we can be pretty sure, but we can't be uh, we can't be certain uh, of these results. And that's kind of one of the downsides of uh, of statistics. But it's the um, uh, we, we do the best we can with it, and, that, and it's usually uh, gives us good results. Okay, so that's using the calculator to uh, um, to calculate confidence intervals for population proportions. Um, you can, we'll use the calculator to, to compute other types of confidence intervals as well in that same menu, um, but for proportions specifically, it's one prop z int is the command that we want to use.